Hey guys, welcome back to Caveman Aquatics. I'm Kev from CavemanAquatics.com. Make sure you check out that website. And today, I'm going to take you through the journey of installing my very first 3D background on this 75 gallon tank. Now it is a couple days process, but I got it all captured and we're going to go through it together. So take a good look at this tank behind me. It's the last time you're going to see this setup with this decor. And stay tuned to the end of the video so you can see the final product. Let's go. So to get started guys, I bought these two 50 gallon totes. Got them at Home Depot, about 20 bucks each. They do come with covers. And what I'm gonna do is start emptying out this tank water and fill these two totes up so that I can get the fish transferred into this temporary home. There we go guys, first new home filling up. Okay guys, so as I'm filling up these tubs with this tank water, I wanna let you guys know why I'm using the same water from my tank into these totes. The reason is not because I'm trying to save the beneficial bacteria that's in the water, because there is none that live in the water. The reason why I'm doing it is just for pH purposes. My tap water comes out at a very low 6.5 pH, and I've gotta use a lot of buffering in this tank to get the pH to the levels that I need for my African cichlids. So because of that, I wanna use the same water from the tank in these totes because the pH is already stable and steady at 8.0. Now I know that what I'm doing is basically transferring the nitrates from this tank into the totes, but that's okay for now. I'm more concerned about making sure that that temporary tote has the same pH levels that these guys are used to so that they don't get shocked when they go into the new tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some prime into these totes, just because prime is really good at detoxifying ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. So if there is any in there, I'm gonna make it nice and safe for my guys. I'm also gonna add some stress guard just because I know that transferring all these fish over into this new environment is gonna really stress them out. So a stress car is gonna help in just keeping everybody nice and calm. So guys, keep in mind, I know you're seeing that tank and the water level getting really low, but my guys are used to this because every week when I do a water change, I do 80% water changes. So they're used to the water levels getting this low and then eventually rising back up. So no worries. So I got my two sponge filters going. The water level is just above the top of the sponge filters. As you can see, they're creating some surface agitation. That's about as much as I want to fill these totes. I don't want to overdo it and have them start flexing on me. So now guys, time to start adding some fish. Time for the fish transfer. So here they go guys, everybody transferred successfully into their totes. Somehow I got lucky and I was able to get exactly 14 in this tote. 
and 14 in this tow. So I get a lot of questions sometimes about how many fish I keep in my 75 gallon. I think now it's safe to say it's 28. Here's the old tank, nobody's in there. We're gonna start transferring the substrate over now because I want to keep as much beneficial bacteria as possible. There is a lot of live beneficial bacteria in this substrate. And even though I'm gonna disrupt a lot of it right now, transferring, transferring it over, I'm still gonna to try to keep as much of it as possible alive, just in case I wanna keep a good amount of beneficial bacteria for these guys for the next possibly two days while we set up this tank. Okay guys, so since I have to empty out that tank completely and get it dry to get ready for the silicone that I need to put on the background, I've got to take all that substrate out anyway, so I might as well use the substrate in these temporary totes to preserve the beneficial bacteria that's in them and keep this thing nice and cycled for the time being. Now, this process is going to take a while, so bear with me. So I got a decent amount of substrate in there guys and both totes. As you can see, this one is starting to buckle out a lot so I don't wanna add too much more substrate and add more volume into them. They've got pretty much good, good enough space for the next two days to stand by. So the rest of this substrate that's in here is gonna go into a standby bucket and we'll use it when we refill the tank. Check out what just came in pretty handy guys. These are the cichlid stones that I just did a review on last week. And as you can see, the guys are all still pretty scared. They don't know where they are. There's a brand new environment. They're all hanging out by the one hiding spot over there by the sponge filter. So I wanted to give them another hiding spot just in case they wanted to try it out. I'll come back later and see if they, if they like it, if they go in there, if they hide behind it. Give them another little spot to get some cover. So one final precaution guys, just to make sure that this tote is good and safe and cycled for the fish, I'm gonna make sure to add some stability from Seachem. This is a very quick starting beneficial bacteria that'll help get any tank cycled quickly. Just as a final measure, I'm gonna make sure that there's enough beneficial bacteria in these totes for these guys for the next two days. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, it says one capful per 10 gallons. I'm gonna assume this to be about 30 gallons each. I'm gonna add three capfuls into each tote. Okay guys, the tank is all ready. Got it nice and dry, got it nice and clean, got all those small little particles of substrate out of there. Now we're gonna go ahead, take it off the stand, get it down on the floor, and start putting in our 3D background. But first, let's open it up and take a look at what this is gonna look like. This thing looks awesome. 
Look at the detail in all of this. Look at these cracks in the rock. You can't tell where one piece starts and where one piece ends. It just looks like a fluid, realistic looking rock piece. I love it. it looks great. All right, guys, so this is the first piece. Aqua Decor recommends you put them in piece by piece. We're gonna go ahead and start siliconing this one. So guys, for this, I'm using this Aquion 100% silicone aquarium sealant. I'm gonna read this right off the bottle to you guys. Permanently flexible, does not crack or shrink. Waterproof seal stops leaks. Same strength silicone used to manufacture new aquariums. Non-toxics for use on freshwater and saltwater aquariums. Long lasting bond is easy to apply. This is the stuff that you need to apply your background to your tank. It's gotta be aquarium sealant. Right guys? Uh, press down, press firmly, make sure you push it to the corner. Get that sealant to spread out and stick. See the back wasn't down, I just pushed it down. So this corner right here is just popping up a little bit. So I'm gonna use these weights just to prop on top of it. Put a little bit of a force pushing down on it. That way we get a good contact with the glass and the ceiling can uh, cure properly. All right guys, there she is. Got all the pieces in, got them all siliconed. They all fit in perfectly. I got a couple of weights on some pieces because they're popping up a little bit in the corners, but this will keep them pushed down. Uh, we're gonna let this sit for about 48 hours, make sure the silicone, the silicone cures well. And then I'll see you guys in about two days. Boom, just like that, it's two days later. How do we know? I got a little more stubble on my face. I think I got a new shirt on. Oh, and the background is in. Silicone is dry, and today we're gonna go ahead and fill this baby up with some water. Let's go. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is just rinse off this background real quick. When you install the background, the instructions say don't rinse your background before installing it. I guess Aqua Decor just wants to make sure that the pieces are as dry as possible before you start siliconing it. I can understand that if you if you rinse them off before and they were a little bit moist maybe the silicone won't work right so now that the silicone is dry i'm going to go ahead and rinse them off now and get that dust off of them before filling up the tank you guys see all that stuff floating around on the bottom there that's just all the dust particles that came off these rocks so i'm going to go ahead and take this water out now and try to get most of that dust out of the tank before making my filters do all that work. And then we'll refill the whole tank. Well, that didn't work too well. 
Nope, not too well at all. So instead, what I'm going to do is grab a towel and I'm just going to try to scoop up as much of this dirt as I can uh, along with the water. Get the dirt and the water out of there with this towel. Wring it out a few times. Come back in and just do it over. Try to get as much of this dust out now before I fill the whole tank up and then make the filters get all this dust out and then it'll, it'll be trapped in the filters. I'd rather just get it out now. No problem. So here goes my bucket of substrate that I took out originally. You can see the bucket is still wet. It's been sitting here for two days in this water. I don't know how much beneficial bacteria actually survived, but hopefully some of it did. But this is going right back into the tank. Guys, as thick as this background is, there really is no good spot to put your canister filter outputs. I didn't trust myself to cut this thing apart and, and slit a, a slice through it. I didn't want to damage it. I didn't want to lose the warranty. So what I ended up doing is putting my output hoses on the side of the tank. Doesn't look too bad. You can hide those hoses. But will you, what you will have to do is cut out pieces on your canopy if you have one so that your canopy can go onto your tank. I'm gonna show you a piece of that right now. So here's the canopy guys, got it on the floor right now off the tank. If you look on the side here, I have to cut these little rectangles, make space for the canister output hoses to be able to slide underneath there. Not the best cuts in the world, but hey, we're fish keepers, not woodworkers, right? Still functional, gets the job done. Here's the canopy on the tank, guys. You see the hoses fit nice and snug right into those holes. And you can't really see it over here from the side, so it's all right. So now I'm gonna start working on my intake holes. As you guys can see, my old one was really short. And now that I moved the FX6 over to the left side of the tank, I did that so that there's less distance between the filter and the output hose. That way you get more power out of your FX6. Um, but now I've got to use a new hose, a longer hose, and set it up as my intake hose. So I'm just connecting the aqua stop valves onto the new longer hose. Then I'll measure the distance to where the intake strainer is going to be, cut the hose, and set it up that way. So here's my intake strainer installed guys. As you can see, it's hidden from view behind the background. What Aqua Decor does is that they cut out this chamber for you here where water can enter through the side of the background and then fill up inside this chamber. And here's where your intake strainer will go along with your heater. And this will hide your strainer so that it's not in view and it still gets water to your filters. Now I did get some substrate that got was able to get back there but that's all right if it does go into the filter i'll just clean it out later but i think this is really nice the whole background is siliconed except for this chamber right here to allow water to enter through the side and fill up the chamber
right, guys, welcome to day three of the process. If I don't look tired, trust me, I am. I don't even know what shirt I'm wearing anymore. But we let the tank clear up overnight, let the filters do their thing, and now we got some good looking crystal clear water ready to put these fish back in their new home. Let's do it. Here go the boys. They've been doing pretty good in their tote for the last three days. Only thing I haven't fed them in three days, just because I didn't want to feed them and possibly add more ammonia to this water, being that I only got a sponge filter in each. So I want to hurry up and get them into their new home, and then I got a nice little treat for them for their good behavior. the first settlers. I think that's everybody. So I also decided to add more substrate because I wanted the bed a little bit thicker. So I grabbed some substrate from the totes that I was using earlier. And I'm just gonna spread it out along the tank. Just make the bed a little thicker. Give them a little bit more something to play with. I did promise that they were gonna get a nice little treat for their good behavior. I got some Omega-1 frozen brine shrimp. They're gonna love it. So now that you guys have seen the new setup, you might be wondering what I'm gonna do with this. And what I'm gonna do with this. These are the two decor pieces that were in my tank previously. I'm gonna tell you what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna get rid of them. But since so many of you have asked me so many of you have asked, have asked me about where I found this decor. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a giveaway. I can locate these in my local stores. And for those of you that were interested in these decor, let me know if you'd be interested in a little bit of a contest, free giveaway type of thing. And maybe we'll set one up next week. Now, even though the tank is a bit cloudy because I just moved a bunch of stuff around and I added more substrate, I'll leave you guys to the fishes.